<laughs> Have you also struggled with lighting on a map that includes both indoors and outdoor elements? Like when you create a cave system where it has to be dark and creepy within the cave, but you also want to cover the entrance where it has to be bright and sunny. I often end up using patterns in Dungeon Draft for most of these situations, but their major downside is that they dim down light sources as well. Your search is over however, because today I'm going to show you how you can tackle this. Hello and welcome everybody, my name is Fake Fairy Tale, and today I would like to do a relatively short video on a topic that I came across again in the Crosshead Studio Tips and Tricks channel. And it was a tip given by Shadow Creature 22 I believe she is a map creator for the Crosshead Studios map releases, a uh, very skilled map maker if you ask me. And she was giving an excellent multi-step example on how to approach a situation like this without making things hard for yourself. And I immediately got excited because this is something that I've struggled with in the past and still do on occasion. And I found her approach simply brilliant. So today I would like to show you guys how to go about it. Now, first thing I would like to recreate, I made this little scene over here where we have a section of the outdoors and we have a section indoors. And I would like to show you my regular method of approaching this. And I presume this is more or less how you did it as well. We can first place down a light source indoors and it's going to function as the fire for the brazier that we have over here. And we can just place something relatively small in there. We'll crank up the range a tiny bit and we'll place it on top. And now what I'm going to do is I grab a shadow pattern. We're going to scroll all the way down here. So let's say that we're going to take shadow pattern 50 here and we're going to give the inside area a, a darker feeling and a darker atmosphere. So we'll take the custom shape tool, we'll place it on layer 700 and then we're just going to quickly draw out the shape. There we are. And now as you can see, it's still actually quite decently visible in there. We can place down a light in front of the cave entrance to, and we'll make that a very soft one. We'll take intensity 0.7. Yeah, I think that looks good. And we'll make the range 14. Because we do want to have the sense of lighting coming in. And now we're going to have to brighten up at the entrance a little bit. So we'll take a smaller 0.2, I think is all right. Intensity one. And we'll create the light falling like so. And now we're going to have to add some lighting here as well, because the one light that's already there simply isn't bright enough. So either you'll have to crank up the intensity or you're going to have to add some lights over there. Now with the cranked up intensity, I think this works reasonably well and let's see what the end result is that we have we could spend some more time on this um, and make sure that we really fine-tune the lighting that we have in here but we also want to make maps fast and don't have all these tedious processes that you have to take into account and with the added lighting the result already looks reasonably well however it's not perfect and it's not as good as the second example i'm going to show you in a bit because, well, what we can do is we can add in some shadow paths to make the internal area darker. Uh, we can add in some extra lights, which is quite a few clicks you'll have to do in order to spread that evenly in order to make sure that everything looks as it should. So let's take the orange light, we'll place it somewhat in the corner and we'll take another light. We'll make it very bright again, turn down the intensity, make it quite big. And we'll use this as some kind of daylight outside. Now this works and with a few additional clicks you can still get the result that you're looking for. However, and I would like to open up the second example, this process can become much easier if you do it like this. And now I've already created the map to show you the differences but I'm going to walk you through this process in just a bit. We have some bright lights outside that really tone up the outside. I mean, this looks like it's a summer day. It's very bright. Though on the other side, we still have a kind of dark and creepy cave slash dungeon that really carries its atmosphere. And what I especially like in this method is the contrast between them. This is actually quite dark. You have this great light falling in here. That looks really good. And the outside really feels like it's a proper day outside. What's different about this map than the previous one? I'm going to show you by removing all the lights that we have here. 
all right and here we are and as you can see it's very dark on this map and that's because we've turned down the environment light uh, the ambient lighting to something that's a bit darker and now i accidentally removed the effect but we can get it back very easily there we go uh, the ambient lighting is just six fives and then you get this rather dark uh, environment you don't want it to be pitch black because that simply will look weird in your map but this is perfectly to work with and what we're going to do now is we're going to add some lights and we're going to add some uh, bright kind of white lights for the outside area for the sunlight and we'll add in a much more orange light for the flame and we can simply do that by we don't need much more than one click i would like to have it a bit bigger so let's say we take the second one here and we're going to eight for now we'll place that on top of the fire and now we're going to create the sunlight we'll put it back on white and we'll take some of these very soft ones and we do need a bit more intensity and we're gonna make multiple of these We'll reduce the range in the middle here somewhat because otherwise you get these very distinct lines going inside. We do want to have like one light in the middle of it um, to make sure that it sheds some light into the tunnel. And we'll add in like one or two more on top because that's where we want the sun to be coming from. But there we go already. And if we zoom out a bit and we count, so let's say with 11 clicks, you can already achieved the same results that we did with the last map however you don't need to add any shadow paths for the inside i mean if we zoom in on this a little bit this looks very workable already you don't need to add anything in here if you want to be nitpicky you might want to add in a uh, a smaller high intensity light not too high on intensity you'll make sure it stays small i'll place that on top right there to make sure that the fire looks really bright and there we are and now you have a awesome looking result now another interesting method when using this method of lighting and let me quickly remove all the lights here is that you can easily adapt the outside based on the kind of weather or environment it's in and a good example for that would be let's say that we want to have a nighttime map or a nighttime version of this map instead of just making it very dark outside you can always just take the soft lighting again and we're going to add some blue to it and we'll again create some lights on the outside and then again with a smaller range and there we go that's finished and i'll quickly show you the lights i placed down fewer lights with a bit of blue to it and you get a atmosphere for night however it's still very visible and it has kind of the same effect on the indoor area you still have that gradual info of light however it's a bit less noticeable right now because the lights outside are not as bright but it still creates the same effect and you could easily use this as a nighttime map now let's export both maps and we'll compare them next to one another and here we are i have the two examples atop of one another so that we can just switch between them because i think that's the easiest way to indicate the differences between the two if you want to take a look at this yourself i'm going to add the maps in a google drive link that you'll be able to find in the description of this video uh, so that you can just compare the two with them and the major difference that i would like to point out is uh, so this is the brighter one using the new method where we turn down the ambient lighting and this one is the old system where I just have the ambient lighting on the brighter setting and we just darken out the indoor area with a shadow pattern. And as you can see, it's actually quite a bit brighter inside. The light is not as visually present as it is in the other one, meaning that the indoor and outdoor differences aren't as significant as they are in this map. Then in addition to that, the new map has a brighter outside, which feels more like a sunny day. But the most important thing yet, I believe, is the inflow of light into the cave and the natural shadows it already creates by turning down the atmosphere lighting. When we switch quite rapidly between the two, you can see the difference quite well. And you can mainly see that there is a natural inflow of light into the entranceway from the light that we placed here in front of the tunnel. And it's going to darken out gradually towards the end of this section, meaning that this area already seems kind of shaded as if you applied shadows to it without ever having to put in the work. And if we want to achieve the same results in this map, 
we would have to start working with uh, some additional shadow pathways um, in order to create the same atmosphere. And in this small example, this will save you maybe a few minutes. But if you do this on large maps where you have a lot of different in and outdoor spaces, that could save you maybe half an hour to an hour. And in order to show you the difference between the nighttime version of this map and the daytime version, using this new lighting method, uh, here we are. It's still very visible, it's very easy to correct because you can just delete the lighting that you've already placed and just add some new ones. And the end result looks great without putting a ridiculous amount of time in it. So let me switch back to the other map. Now, I have to admit that I found this style a very clever way of approaching the lighting difference. So I thoroughly believe this is going to save you a bunch of headaches. So I'll be sure to add that into uh, my future maps and I hope you find it useful as well. Now, if you're interested to know how I created this little setting, I do recommend following my latest video playlist on recreating the top photo map in Dungeon Draft. I use practically all the techniques that I used here in that series as well. So if you're curious to see how we create this gradual fade in into uh, the negative space or anything else, go check out that series and there might actually be uh, one or two useful things in there for you. Now, if you'd like to stay up to date of all my content, please hit the like, favorite and subscribe button. And don't forget to ring that sub notification bell to get a notification every time a new video goes live. I've also created a Twitter account where I'll be posting a notification before a new video airs and probably some minor off topic things as well. Um, I just like to have another channel through which I can communicate with you guys uh, without having to create a video every time. And last but not least, if you want to support the channel, please also so check out our Patreon page where I have some tokens and some maps available for your support. And that was it for this video. I would like to thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.